A voltmeter connect in circuit with the polarity as shown. The voltmeter is here. Voltmeter don't let current pass through it, one, by the way. The sliding contact, you see this arrow, can move up and down. It's moved to NP and then to NQ. As you move, the reading will change. What are the two readings of the voltmeter when it is at P versus when it is at Q? So you, either you imagine this arrow, I take and I poke here, then I take and I poke it there, or if you feel like miss, I cannot imagine so many things. Okay, then we redraw. <laughs> There's only one choice. Here we go again. Let's redraw. Battery. Let's poke it at Q. Uh, sorry, P. That means I don't even include the resistor there. So I'm just going to draw like this. This is P, this is Q. Then I go this first loop. And then the second battery outside. That's. Eh, my voltmeter there. Ah, yeah, I forgot to draw voltmeter. Ah, there la voltmeter. Let's do a little eraser here. Once again, what I'm doing here is I am just drawing the scenario. What happens when I poke at P? And this is 3 volt. Okay, then I draw one more for when I poke at Q. So now I take this voltmeter arrow, I poke here. Ding. Can move around one, wire ma. So let's draw on the right side. This comes down, hmm, poke at Q. I kind of wrap this whole thing here, so I'm going to draw it like that. And like that. This is P, this is Q. We have a battery. And it is now pointing on this end. Okay, I just rearranged a bit so it's easier to see. Okay, that's, that's, all, I, that's all I did. All right, now we look at the reading of the voltmeter. Remember, voltmeter measures what? Ah? Voltmeter measures potential difference. Or if you want to think of it, the delta V, potential. From the one side of, to the other side, what's the difference? There are two, two ways to think about this, both also based on Kirchhoff's law. I will show you both. Ah. I will show you the official way and I'll show you my own method. The official way is to think of Kirchhoff's loops. Kirchhoff loop. Kirchhoff law says that in a loop, the sum of EMF must be the sum of potential drop. So let's say I look at the situation on the left and I say, I want to draw a loop. I need to find potential difference across the voltmeter, right? I mean, that's what the voltmeter is reading. So maybe I do a loop like this. I don't want to include the resistor because I don't know what is the potential difference across the resistor. Question mark. I don't know. No information given. So I don't want to include that in the loop. So in this single loop by itself, we have a 3 volt boost from a battery. So I could go in any direction I want for the loop, but then I know there definitely will be a 3 volt EMF. And this battery is there. Okay. How about the drop? If I go in this direction, then there's a potential drop. That's going to be what's measured by my voltmeter. So what the voltmeter will measure will be 3 volts. So hence, 3 volts. Okay, that's the first one we can think about. How about another method to find this though? Is there another way to think about this? Uh, yeah, it's similar idea, slightly more complicated if you're not used to it. But let's say I choose a reference point mm, here to be zero potential. I choose one. Huh? So if I move along the line and I come to this and I go up by three volts, oh, now my potential is three. Three, 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 three come back here. Okay. I will have definitely have to drop down certain potential because... This in itself is a loop. So three, I should have to drop down to zero at the bottom because I'm going back to the battery. And if I come back to my stain starting point, I have to be at zero volt. So from three, I drop down to zero. Loop complete. Okay, first loop is satisfied. Second loop is this tiny one. So somehow I have to go, something happened here and I'm back to zero. 
So this is only one way to do it. I can come to here is zero. And then if I move from this to this side, I am going down the battery from positive, very high, oh, go down to negative. So go down by three. Wow, then here become negative three. Okay. End of the day, I need to find potential difference. So what's the difference between zero and negative three? Three volts. Oh. So the potential difference by voltmeter is three. This is based on the variation of Kirchhoff's law, where in a whole circuit, the potential change, whether you go up or come down, should be zero if you get back to the same point, which is our reference point here. So I go one round, come back, okay, no. go up, down, up, down, up, down, like climbing mountain, go down valley. So both of these methods also work. Let's try for the right side. How do you think of it now? If you haven't already looked at it, we want to choose a loop, right? Okay, let's try a loop. Hmm. Maybe we say, oh, miss, we just draw a loop here again. No? But now we have a problem. If I draw this loop, I have included this resistor and I don't want to include the resistor because I don't know how much potential drop is across it. Because if I write an equation, this will be EMF. This is this, this, this three volts here. Yeah, right here, three volts. Three volt equals to something from the voltmeter reading plus another drop across the resistor, IR. I don't know eh, any of this information. So preferably not. We are not going to choose this loop. No. What we have to do now is to choose a loop that does not include the resistor. So I'm going to choose actually the whole external loop like this. Then you see, you see, we ignore the resistor. I don't care the resistor, what value. I just want to see the four beta reading. Okay, can I do one more? Can. Loop ma, as long as you can draw a loop. So we do the loop, the same thing, Kirchhoff's law. EMF around the loop is the same as the potential drop inside that loop. Now this one, there's two batteries. Are the batteries fighting each other or helping each other? You look carefully. Positive, negative. Down here is positive, negative. So the positive, if I follow, is helping. Wow, you go up by three volt. Then go here. Wow, go up again by three volt. So the batteries are helping each other. So this will be three plus three. Going up. Any drops, no resistor, no drops. The only drop here is going to be the voltmeter. So here, equal to voltmeter reading, which is the potential drop across this voltmeter. So that will be 6, which is your voltmeter reading. So let's look at the, the value down here. 6, 6. Best choice here is going to be D. So we choose D for our answer. 3 and 6. What about the other method? Can we use that here? Can, absolutely. Choose a reference point to be your starting point and just call it zero reference point. Want to do the same method? So here I can just say, oh yeah, zero volt. Lah. Okay, then we go up. This one is a rise. You go up by 3. Okay, here is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Uh, go down the resistor, drop down to zero because you need to go back to this point, starting point. How about the other loop? Okay, uh, let's say I want to follow um, in this direction. Here is still zero. If I cross the battery, I'm going down the battery from positive to negative. So this one should be lower by three. If I cross this way up, plus three oh, becomes zero. I, I, either way also can one. Uh. Here will be negative three. So what's the difference between 3 and negative 3? 6. Oh. So here, if you use this method, the potential difference across the two ends of the voltmeter, 3 minus negative 3, 6. All right. So that's how we can think of this question, Kirchhoff's law or either form of Kirchhoff's law to solve potential meter questions like this.